Dr. Tarun Mittal is a surgeon in New Delhi. He's fighting on the front lines of an epidemic quietly sweeping India, driven by a new menace, junk food. We reduce the size of the stomach, which is called a sleeve gastrectomy. We have operated from age of 13 till the age of 74. Initially, when I joined my practice, I was seeing maybe one or two patients a month. Now, I am seeing 15 to 20 patients a month. In India, almost one in four adults is considered overweight or obese. If nothing changes, the country's obesity rate is set to increase by more than 80% by 2035. This is not simply a story of individuals making unhealthy lifestyle choices. In India and much of the world, larger economic and social forces are threatening people's health and prosperity. Much of India's history has been blighted by famine. As recently as 1943, the Bengal famine killed up to 3 million people. Even now, roughly a third of children suffer from stunted growth. And yet, over the last three decades, obesity has surged, and it's set to get worse. That's been accompanied by a rise in cardiovascular disease and diabetes. The economic costs are enormous. Premature deaths, healthcare costs, and productivity losses resulting from an overweight population are estimated to top $129 billion by 2035, almost 2% of its GDP. It's a double burden of malnutrition now. Malnutrition means under and over. Now we are seeing a lot of overnutrition as well. Dr. Arun Gupta is a paediatrician and health campaigner. He is the co-author of The Junk Push, a report detailing how changing food consumption threatens health. Since the globalization, the marketing of uh, processed and ultra-processed food uh, has picked up that has actually influenced a lot of dietary habits. One of the major input here is unhealthy diet composing of ultra-processed foods, high in sugar, high in saturated fat, or high in salt or sodium. Throughout the country, home-cooked meals are losing out to empty calories and sugar. In the span of a decade, India's consumption of breakfast cereals and potato chips have more than tripled, while confectionery items and soda sales have doubled. India is a massive emerging market for Western brands. Sales of ultra-processed snack food and sugary beverages grew from $6.2 billion in 2009 to $32 billion in 2022. For companies like Nestle, Unilever or Kelanova, sales are growing at double-digit rates. And who are one of the main targets? Whenever we go to a party, suppose a birthday party of one friend, there'll be various junk food items such as Coke, uh, Pepsi. I really enjoy Maggi and like noodles and ramen. Burger King, McDonald's, Maggi, pasta, chips, burger, pizza. They taste very delicious. India's new food economy has created a public health conundrum, with the packaged food and beverages industry increasingly affecting the diets of 1.4 billion Indians. One remedy that other countries have turned to is stricter regulation. Chile, for example, has an advertising ban on television on certain foods between 6am and 10pm. It also has restricted the use of child-targeted imagery in the marketing of these products. After these interventions were introduced, sugary drink sales dropped by 24%, as well as calorie consumption, calories from sugar and calories from saturated fat. Until now, India has mostly relied on the companies themselves self-regulating how they convey the nutritional value of their products. The results, some argue, are misleading. If you see the front of the pack, you will see that they claim that it's like 50% of vitamin D, rich in vitamin C, no added preservatives, and it says very brightly 20% protein. But if you look at the back of the label, you find the 46% of it is sugar more than 13 grams of sugar, stabilizer, colors, and flavors. If you are telling people that it is high in protein, you very well tell it is high in sugar and high in fat also. Efforts are underway to introduce a more rigorous system. Throughout 2021 and 2022, Indian authorities consulted health and consumer rights experts and representatives of food companies about a new labeling system. 
While health and consumer rights groups argued for a traffic light system used by much of Europe, which signals red for products high in sugar, fat or salt, the eventual conclusion by the authority was for a health star rating, which assigns star ratings for a product's overall nutritional value. Not everyone was happy. Health stars only point that this food is either healthy or less healthy. It doesn't tell people that it is unhealthy. For example, a pack of cookies may have a very high amount of sugar, but if the manufacturers add nuts, it could get awarded a star for containing fibre. Getting that regulation right has been evading us in the country. So that is one part of the story. But what we are missing out is, you know, working at community level with children, with parents, families, to create an environment for healthy eating and sustainable food environments. Pavan Agrawal runs the Food Future Foundation, a non-profit that seeks to educate school children about healthy eating. The foundation runs programs in schools like this one in order to educate children and parents. It is so important to focus on preventive strategy and use diet and lifestyle as an entry point for this intervention. Government or any regulatory body cannot reach out to individual citizen at all meal times. So at the end of the day, it is about individual choices. While nutrition advocates seek tighter regulation, that may run at odds with Prime Minister Narendra Modi's strategy to attract more investment from multinational companies. The fear among health experts is that the burden will ultimately fall upon people to make healthy choices on their own, with little guidance from the government. One of the tactics they use is the putting the onus on the people. They, that it is the people who are choosing to eat wrong foods, it's not us, which probably is one of the strategies which they have been using for tobacco also. That the people are smoking by their choice, not because of the marketing. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand named most was Camel. Smoke Camels, the cigarette so many doctors enjoy. The tactic is industry will become a part of the solution. They want to be a part of the solution. They enter into policy making bodies. Of course, the government allows them to do so as stakeholders. Strict regulations and education have driven down smoking rates across the globe. Imposing controls on the food industry may be necessary to fight India's surging obesity rates and the illnesses that it causes. Diabetes, hypertension, joint pains, back pain, varicose veins, gallbladder stone, hernia, cancers, infertility, chest problems, heart problems. It is putting an enormous strain on our economy. A country once blighted by too few calories must face a new battle with too many empty ones.